all the fun and games of the street parade. But the good times are not all down to hormones. Drugs also play a role at events like this, and cocaine is a popular choice. Users feel energized and euphoric. The City of Zurich's youth counseling service, Streetwork, set up a mobile testing laboratory to check the purity of amphetamines on sale, which are generally cut or diluted. About 75% of cocaine is laced with foreign substances. In the lab, scientists try to find out how dangerous these are. Over the past few years, cocaine has been cut with a painkiller called phenacetin, which was withdrawn from the shelves in Europe 20 years ago because it damages the kidneys. It's still for sale in South America. Levamisol, a worm killer, is mixed with cocaine to increase the buzz, but it changes the blood count, so this isn't very good for you either. During the street parade, ravers brought in 68 samples for testing, 12 of which were cocaine. Swiss television asked whether these free lab tests could actually encourage people to take drugs. Actually, it has the opposite effect. Before we offered these lab tests, there was nothing in the media about ecstasy or other substances being bad for you. Nobody talked about it. Since we've been carrying out tests, we've been able to give exact information about risks and dangers for new and designer drugs. The whole discussion has been brought out into the open, and consumers have been a lot more cautious. Before they can get their samples tested, visitors to the lab have to fill in a questionnaire about their drug consumption habits. This is very interesting information. We analyze the findings to establish whether there are changes in consumption habits. We want to know the difference between what younger and older people are taking. And we can pass this information on to other organizations. The DIZ Drug Information Center in Zurich is an important drop-in center for this young man, who regularly comes for counseling and to test his drugs for purity. Max has been using cocaine for seven years. I come here to find out how good my gear is, so that it's okay for me and I don't pass anything bad onto other people. Visitors to the center are aged between 16 and 71 and come from all levels of society. These young men started using cocaine when they were teenagers. The deciding factors were price and availability. These days it's easier to get a gram of coke than to get something to smoke. Ten years ago it was completely different. You could find cannabis on every street corner. Now it's easier to find a gram of coke than cannabis. How many lines of cocaine have you had today? Seven or eight. How can you afford it? You're out of work. I'm registered with a group that helps drug addicts and earn a bit from that. Do you also sell it to finance your habit? Yes, sometimes I have to do that. Michael is going to a club tonight. While driving, he prepares a line of cocaine. He takes up to 20 lines of coke a day, costing 200 francs. Michael has tried to kick his coke habit, but it's not easy, as his counsellor explains. It's a very long, drawn-out process. Every time we talk to people, we find out more about the problems connected with their addiction. There are physical and health issues, problems with work, unemployment, social problems. We encourage them to think about giving up the drugs, but it takes a long, long time before addicts are willing to take this step. With no job and no girlfriend, Michael says he just doesn't have the incentive to quit. I don't really plan to give up altogether. I can imagine taking a line now and again all my life, whenever I want one. 